today checking out the 1965 electric Cortina. We're going to go through everything that went into this build and how it all works. Explain a few things that might be a little bit odd to some of the petrol guys. We're charging the car at the moment, so the car's on, we've got an Android head unit and we're looking at some of the battery stats here. We've got the state of charge, we're about 55%, uh, we're pulling about two and a half, three kilowatts out of James's solar uh, panels on top of the roof of the Traction EV workshop. Um, we've got a GPS speedo here, total pack voltage, high and low temperature of the battery module cells and high and low voltage of each individual cell so we can monitor what we need to of the of the battery stats uh, we're still fine-tuning what digital gauges we need but we don't need to have them on all the time to drive the car because we have still got analog controls here we've got fuel gauge telling us what the battery state of charge is uh, and we've got speed uh, and everything else we need to drive the car so we can have the tunes on there if we, or the maps if we need it uh, down here you'll see the only modification to, to drive the electric Cortina is a little fascia panel here that controls the direction of the motor, the electric motor and the way it spins. So if you wanted to go backwards you just flick it into reverse and whatever gear you're in will, uh, will go in that uh, direction. Flick it down and you're in drive and you're going forward. Off pedal braking is like regenerative braking when you take your foot off the accelerator. So we do have regenerative braking when you put your brake on foot on the brake pedal. This is for off pedal braking if you want to drive uh, with one pedal. Um, and what else we got? We got air conditioning unit down here which is your uh, electric, full electric high voltage air conditioning which is great for a Queensland summer. So nice, such a nice thing to have in a classic car. <laughs> such a sweet sweet addition. Otherwise yeah. it's pretty stock standard in, inside. Let's go and have a look yeah. uh, under the front bonnet and in the back and put her up on the hoist. Yeah. Okay so here we are at the front of the car, the bonnet open. Um, first thing you'll notice is the aluminium battery box. This has got two of the Tesla modules stacked one on top of the other inside of it and that's mounted to factory bolt hole locations in the car so we haven't drilled any new holes in the car at all. It's got some nice lightweight yet strong ladder supports there. Keep it all nice and secure. Uh, then next you'll see here we've got a fluid reservoir that's got coolant for the battery system that's pumping circulating right now while it's charging. Uh, then you can see the Aircon system, so we've got the condenser up front, dryer, and the aircon compressor. That's got its own electric motor on the front of it, uh, pulling power from the high voltage battery pack. So nice and efficient, clean, neat install, no uh, rubber pulley belts or anything. Um, then you'll see the net gain hypernine motor. Uh, that makes 90 kilowatts, spins 8,000 RPM. Uh, 240 newton meters of torque and up on top of that is the speed controller that's kind of like your uh, kind of like your heads or your uh, fuel injection system for the electric motor uh, so around the back of the Cortina now uh, you can see we're plugged in and charging through the type 1 charge socket J1772 this is going through the original fuel filler cap uh, so we haven't had to cut any new holes there uh, that's for your AC overnight charging, so you can take this to your friend's place and plug in and charge there, not a problem. And then over on this side where the exhaust tip used to come out, we've got the DC fast charge port. This is a Chatamo standard charge port for uh, public fast charging. Um, so that was great that we didn't need to cut any holes for that one. So we'll open up the boot and show you what's inside. Here we've got the rear battery box tucked up under the parcel shelf. Keeps a lot of room still in the boot, which is great. Uh, this rear battery box has three 
Tesla modules in it, so five in total. Uh, roughly now six by uh, five by six, so a bit over 30 kilowatt hours total. Uh, I'm hoping for around 180, 190 kilometers range. Um, what's great here is we've managed to use the original factory petrol tank as our electrical enclosure. So again, uh, we haven't had to cut any new holes. Okay, so let's look what's inside. Here we have the onboard AC charger that goes with the car. That's also the DC-DC converter. That's kind of like your alternator. So high voltage power goes into the DC-DC. It outputs 12 volts for all of your 12 volt accessories in the car. Uh, then we've also got the Orion 2 BMS um, taking care of all of the health of the battery pack and the high voltage junction box. So it's got your contactors and uh, fuses and things and the uh, high voltage maintenance switch there as well. So it keeps it all nice and tucked away and neat and uh, didn't need to chop anything up. Okay, so here we are underneath the car. Uh, starting at the front here, um, you can see the bottom side of the Hyper 9 and that's bolted to the custom-made billet aluminium adapter plate which bolts it to the gearbox. Uh, I've got a upgraded clutch inside there, take the extra torque of the motor. Uh, I've got some custom fabricated motor mounts there going to the factory cross member mounts. Again, didn't need to cut anything on the car to do that. You can see the aircon compressor there riding on its own little mount. So standard drive shaft, standard diff. Um, here you can see from the front of the car we've got some high voltage cables and the coolant lines. Those run through the inside of the car, inside of conduits, so they're nice and safe for the passengers inside. Uh, they're hidden underneath the carpet, you wouldn't even know. So here you can see the uh, second um, battery coolant pump. Um, that's just an extra booster pump, um, helping keeping pressure running through the whole length of the car. Both the battery boxes are on one coolant circuit. Uh, there you can see all of the cables and everything uh, running through into the rear uh, high voltage enclosure, the factory fuel tank. And uh, we've got our ventilation side for the charger, getting nice airflow out, keeping the charger nice and cool. And on the other side here, uh, we've got the conduit for the Chatamo charge port. Yeah, so it's all pretty clean and neat underneath the car. There's nothing uh, weird hanging down. It's all nicely safe tucked up and running in conduits and things like that so yeah really happy with how it all looks from underneath